8 Isaiah or Isaiah 8 verse 17 and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob and I will look for him in Jesus name Amen and you may be seated Father, thank you for adding your blessing upon the word of God. Amen. Israel is not saved yet. But all Israel shall be saved. Romans eleven twenty six. Blindness had taken part in Israel as of this day. Verse 25. But verse 26, nevertheless, all Israel, shout, all Israel shall be saved. We saw on Wednesdays that the merciful God will proclaim the living gospel from heaven to all the earth. will pick 144,000 Jewish believers, Christians, I don't call them messianic, I call them Christians. Because in the first church in Antioch, the disciples were called Christians. You might say, yes, this is the equivalent of messianic. Not exactly, even though linguistically is, theologically is not. Because Christian is Christ-like, is Christ doing the work in me, not as a Messiah, geopolitical leader, but as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. As Christ in me, the hope of glory. Now connect it with this one. Christ is Jehovah God. Christ Jesus is Jehovah God. Jehovah God is the very personal name of God. Exodus 6, around verse 3. I have revealed myself to you as the Almighty, as God, the Elohim, but I haven't re revealed myself to you as Exodus Exitria. Is that it? I haven't yet revealed myself to you as Jehovah, Yudhevah, hey. From Hayahoveyi here, which means he was, he is, he will be. And since God never was, never will be, he always is, don't take it wrong. Amen. We shout, holy, 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 God Almighty, who was, is, and is to come. We confess that. But he himself, intra-Trinitarianly, within the Trinity, he never was, he never will be, he is outside time. He is not permeated with time. He created time. We are permeated with time. And we need to put it into context for us. So when we say he was. is for us to understand to. Before in the past. In the human timing he was. 
But God never says he was in between himself. How many of you know God, God is a triune God? He's one God, yet three persons. Three distinct, totally distinct persons. Amen? So amongst the intra-Trinitarian relationship, there, there has never been he was or he will be. He always is. And he reveals that to us in Exodus 3.14 when Moses asks him to say, when they ask him, who do I say sent me when these people, stiff-necked people ask me who sent me, why should I listen to you? Tell them, I am that I am. In Hebrew, Ani, that's it. The verb to be does not exist in Hebrew. I am. It's only I. God is the great I. To understand it, we say the great I am. We need to say that because if we don't put the verb to be, it doesn't make sense in English or in Greek. But to show you how deep that is, God does not need the verb to be because he is. Just came from heaven. New revelation. I'm going to say that again. God never needs the verb to be because he always is. Amen. So forget about, you know, I'm messianic and I believe in the Messiah. You know, this church is one of the most staunch supporters of Israel. We hold Israeli conferences every year. We support Israel in hard times, easy times, nowadays, every time. But we don't get off into the Hebraic Roots movement. Listen to me. That's another thing coming up. That's why you need to receive your teaching from the official pulpit God put in your life. Okay? I've seen a list of 13 points not to say. Don't say I'm born again. Don't say I'm Christian. Don't say about eternal life. Don't say about this. Don't say about that. 13 points not to say. Not to bring a scandal and offense to the Jewish people. How many of you know that Apostle Peter was Jewish? How did he preach to the Jewish people? Clearly the gospel of Jesus Christ. They say still today, don't put a cross because it's an offense to the Jew. And all the messianic congregations, they don't have a cross. We do have a cross. We do have the seven stand. Lamp, the, 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 the lampstand with the seven candles. We're not ashamed. We have the Israeli flag. Oh yes, Greeks are very offended with the Israeli flag. But we don't compromise. The word of God is the word of God. It doesn't need any help. It's our hope. It's our faith. It's our life invested in it. Amen? So no compromise in this church. So Jesus Christ is not just a geopolitical Messiah that will lead Israel to a military or geopolitical victory. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He is God Almighty who came into flesh, took my sins took your sins, judged sin and curse in the flesh. Listen, if we just say Jesus is just a Messiah that will intervene to save Israel, we lose the main point that God behold the mystery of godliness. First Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh. Otherwise, if he hasn't been resurrected, hasn't shed his blood, hasn't judged sin and curse 
and even became sin for us and curse for us so that we can become the righteousness of God and be totally free from curse. We would be here in vain. So we're not a political group. We are not a political party. We are not just messianics. We are believing in Jesus Christ the Messiah, but Jesus Christ the King God Almighty. Amen. And I said all this to say the following. I told you from this verse, I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. Is he still hidden from the house of Jacob? Yes, because Israel has not yet accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of Israel yet. Can he be revealed to us? The Gentiles, how many of you are Gentiles? Uh, I am not a Gentile. I'm not a Gentile. I refuse to call myself a Gentile. Oh, you say I'm a Gentile. Why? I heard it on TPN. I heard it on this channel. I heard it on YouTube. But I heard it in Ephesians. Chapter 2. From verse 10 to the very end. And we that used to be Gentiles. Ipoteondes. Ethniki, we have become now a new man in Christ Jesus. And Jesus Christ has brought down the middle wall of partition so that Jew and Gentile can be one in Christ. So we do have only one church, Christians, one body, Fivefold ministry, and he's coming back for his bride. On the opposite, in Romans 2, 28, 29, we, the, a true Jew is not a Jew of the circumcision, but the Jew in the heart. So, Circumcision will benefit you nothing. And read at home Galatians 5, Galatians 6 to see the reason they preach, still preach circumcision. Hey, we believe in spiritual, spiritual circumcision. Circumcision is a cut and it's a cut in the heart. We cut our heart and pour out our sinful lives at the cross, the place of exchange. And Jesus Christ poured his blood to us and he gave us his life. That's an exchange. And I don't need a physical circumcision. But it's only for the Jews. No, 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 no. Even if you are a Jew, you don't need a circumcision if you are in Christ Jesus. It is finished. It is done. We don't follow shadows. We follow Jesus Christ who fulfilled everything in the law. So unfulfilled, praise God. That's where hope comes from. That everything is finished. False teachings will take apart the work of Christ, separate it here and there so you don't see the whole picture. We are saved. We need nothing more than the grace of God through faith to apply it in our lives and say, I received the Lord Jesus Christ, repented of my sins, and by faith, there is an exchange at the cross. I gave him my sinfulness. He gave me his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21, many times you said that, but that's our point of reference. We don't give an opinion. We give the word of God. 
the one who knew no sin, God made him to be a sin for us so that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Is Christ Jesus still sin? No more. No more. He took it upon himself to punish it, not to carry it for the rest of his life. He took the curse on him because it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He didn't take the curse to carry it with him. He took the curse. He took the sin to judge them in the flesh and throw them away from our lives forever endeavor so i'm so grateful for the one who finished the work did he do it now let's contextualize is the work of god of christ finished yes and no contextualize the redemptive work of Christ has already finished. Yes, there is another thing Jesus will do. He is sitting at the edge of his throne, ready for the signal of the commander of chief, the Father God, to say, Go! And in the twinkling of an eye, Jesus Christ at the trump of God, he will appear in midair, appear to us, not to, every, not to anybody else. And the Holy Ghost will take us and will take off to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. Redemptively, Jesus Christ has finished the work. Eschatologically, last day's theology, Jesus Christ is yet to do many things more. After we go to heaven. Jesus finished his work. No. He will forever be my Lord. Your Lord. I will forever see the stripes. Healed stripes in his hands. He will lead me, guide me, be my shepherd, be your shepherd. Do you believe in a living Jesus? That he will continually do things for you and for me? Hallelujah, being our shepherd and pastor. Praise the Lord. So, redemptively, it is finished. We need nothing more to be saved. But yet, this body is not saved yet. This body, this mortal shall put on immortality. Amen. This corruptible shall have put on incorruption. Then the saying shall be said, Where is where is your victory or death? Where, for the sting of death is sin, but Jesus Christ has victory, had victory over it. No more death, no more tears, no more crying, no more dying, no more sighing. Somebody has a hope in Christ today. He is our hope. I went to pharmacy store yes, yesterday. About 10, 30, 11. And the pharmacist was so troubled. And he said to me, Inki Kenyora. Inki Kenyora, tosso polizu, Mrs. Telefest, no left any meron. He said, uh, uh, Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Is, is the hour at hand? I said, We live in the last of the last days. He said, I couldn't sleep today. I said, what happened? He said, they are bombarding Syria. I said, when did that happen? You didn't hear anything? I said, you are the first person telling me. He said, they did that from 4 o'clock and I couldn't sleep. I'm troubled. Should he be troubled also? When we see these things, 
What should we do? Don't give me your opinion. Give me the word. When you see these things, lift up your heads for thy redemption draweth nigh. How many of you really believe it? But if the Russians attack a Krodiri right here next door, let me tell you something more tragic than Russians attacking a Krodiri. Don't leave. We'll continue after these commercials. <laughs> Do you find it very hard for the Russians to attack a Krotiri? With nukes? How about, I'm not giving you my, 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 my opinion, I'm going to give you the word. Do you know that every island, you know what's an island? We are on it. Every island shall go underwater. Still encouraged? <laughs> Not giving you my opinion? Come on Wednesdays. Revelation verse by verse. And we'll find it there. Every island will go underneath. Had I had no hope in Christ Jesus, I would have bought the first ticket out. Larnaca, Paphos, it doesn't matter. Boat, airplane, doesn't matter. I would run for my life and for my family. And I would leave you behind. No, you would run with me too. But because the Bible says, when you see these things happening, do not let your heart be troubled. In my father's mansion, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Let not your heart be troubled. What's in the Greek? Μη ούτε ας μη ταράτσετε που είναι μετάφραση στον Βάμβα Το αρχαίο λέει Μη Τι σημαίνει μη Τι σημαίνει μη Ποιος έκανε αυτή την κίνηση Αυτή που με γυρίζει τώρα στο facebook live Έκανε την κίνηση πολλές φορές στα παιδιά της Μη Μη Όταν τα παιδάκια ακούσουν μη τι σημαίνει Μην το κάνεις Όταν ακούσετε εσείς μη τι σημαίνει θα το κάνω έτσι κι αλλιώς. <laughs> Εδώ καταντήσαμε. We say in Greek it says μη ταρασέστο η μόνη καρδία. Do not let your heart be troubled. Why? Is there a reason for us to be troubled? Physically, yes. But if we really believe in the rapture of the church and we believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, what, what have we to, to worry? I mean, yes, we pray with compassion for those that don't know the Lord. But for us and our house, as for me and this house, those who love the Lord and truly born again, when we see these things, we should be encouraged. We should be, I mean, alert, wake up. Grigorita. Prayer, be in prayer. Hallelujah. I mean, some time ago, nobody talked about Third World War. I mean, some crazy things are happening geopolitically. Israel had a military covenant, a military contract, agreement with Turkey. Then they broke that agreement, and Israel now has a military and economic agreement with Cyprus and Greece. Turkey took out, took out, took down a jet fighter of the Russian military jets. Russia was ready to attack Turkey. Now Putin and Erdogan are best friends. And he gives him S-400. For what? To take down more Russian planes? I mean, I don't understand. Now, Russians are with Bashar al-Assad. 
Turkey is against Bashar al-Assad. I mean, that's a puzzle nobody can understand. Hey, anyway, we don't have the time, but you do your homework, okay? Amongst the other verses I gave you, read also Isaiah 17. If you, if you, if you don't have the time, or if you don't want to read it, just read the title of chapter. The vision against Damascus. Damascus shall be put down in ruins. Isaiah chapter 17. Listen to me. Damascus is the first known inhabited city of the antiquity of the old years of the history. The first known populated, very populated city. I know what's going to happen. My Bible tells me Damascus will be flat. Three out of the five countries that will attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 39 are at the borders of northern Israel, Saudi Arabia came with Israel. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Things are falling into place. How many of you remember when we were analyzing Ezekiel 38 and I told you dead done is Saudi Arabia. And in my mind, it didn't click because Saudis and Israelis were so much against each other. And Saudi Arabia was so much into terrorism. And nowadays, it's taking a whole turnaround. And Saudi Arabia is allying with the Western Alliance, the little cabs. Prophetically speaking in Ezekiel 38, 39. So do you see that from the time we were studying the Bible, now they fall into place and not the other way around? Brother Schofield in 1900s, 1900s exactly, 1900. He wrote, I believe since I read Ezekiel 38, there shall be war. Russia will attack Israel with its allies. Kush, Ethiopia, Iran, Persia, and Togarma, Turkey. Three of them. Libya. Okay, that's five or, five or six of them, the main ones. Plus their allies. And we see them nowadays right in, the, in this place. But Schofield wrote this note. You can read it in any Schofield's Bible in the 1900s. He says, in my mind, it doesn't make any sense because who to attack? There is no Israel. There was no Israel. How many of you know there was no Israel in 1900s? How many of you know there was no Hebrew language? In the 1900s. How many remember that verse prophecy from Isaiah again? Saying, can a nation be born in a day? Yes. The answer took place. This verse was fulfilled on May 14, 1948. May 14, 1948. In one day. Israel became a nation. In the same day, six surrounding countries allied same day against Israel to destroy it. But whom God has already blessed, no one else can now curse. Same story with Baal. Same story with, again, with the, uh, trying to destroy Israel by a curse, by a military attack. Now Israel became greater. Now in 1967, Israel blossomed. 
In 2017, another jubilee. 50-50. Οι καημένες, οι σημειώσεις μου και τώρα είναι σε χαρτί πλέον για κάποιο χρονικό διάστημα. How many of you know when the creation of Israel was agreed not took place? How many of you remember? 1917, the declaration of Balfour. I think Balfour is a British city or something. Bal the Balfour, B-A-L-F-O-U-R, the Balfour Declaration in 1917, and I don't remember uh, now the name of the, of the, um, of the commander-in-chief of the British Army who liberated, liberated the area of Israel. They called it Palestine on a purpose. It's not Palestine, it's Israel. He liberated it from the Ottoman Empire that they had them under their bandage for 400 years. How many years was Greece under the Ottoman Empire? 400 years. How many of you know a Muslim, an Islamic um, demand that they have? If something had at any time been Islamic, we don't give it up. We have to take it back. That's why they want Spain. You may say, why Spain? I mean, there are so many countries in Europe. Why Spain? Because Spain was under Ottoman em Empire. It's very important for them. And every place is important for them. So they have us on, on their map. Yes. So did ISIS. But somebody else has us on his map. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going home to be with the Lord Jesus. We have no δεν έχουμε εδώ πόλη διαμένουσαν, αλλά τη μέλουσαν επιζητούμεν. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have no, in English it says, we have not a remaining city here. Are you ready for the departure? Christians, wake up. We live in the last of the last days. People around us are worried. But our hope is in Christ Jesus. Amen. He's coming back. And he's coming back when this third world war starts or the Psalms 83 war starts either little bit before or little bit after these difficult times for Israel are called Jacob's pangs the word pangs is the pains of a woman ready to give birth and the woman ready to give birth is Israel in Revelation 12. And it's not Miriam giving birth to Jesus because that's the middle of the tribulation. Wake up. This is talking about Revelation 12. And Revelation 12 is being interpreted by Genesis 12. And we will see that, we will see that more specifically on Wednesdays. But brothers and sisters, do you believe in the coming king? Do you have any hope when the Lord's face is hidden from all those around you? Do you still have hope in Him? Are you still looking for Him? Because He Himself was the hope of Israel. And I'm saying Jehovah God is fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is Jehovah God. He's God Almighty. He's coming back. He's fully human. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, 
Ας οδηγήσουμε σε πνευματική λατρεία Come on, λάει το Θεό Ας πούμε σε ομαδική λατρεία Ας πιστέψουμε στον Γύρο Come on, people of God Let us believe Let us worship the Lord Let us declare I believe, I believe I, I, I don't mean to sing I mean let's worship Let's worship Let's worship Rakama sheveselte Eri mini vaspel Vekora bakani Shesvete Harav nasa svalate Do bronco rosha I will pray with my mind and I will pray with my spirit. I will sing with my mind. I will sing with my spirit. The Lord is my help. My light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be couldn't sleep I was awake from four o'clock what is going to happen my heart is at ease you know I love these moments because it makes us wake up because we tend to forget the benefits of the Lord now we teach we should live as Christians Maybe you may be seated for a moment, be in a worshipful spirit, everybody in worship team, everybody be in a worshipful spirit. You you may be we tend to forget. We tend we teach we should live as if though we are going to live for the next thousand years upon this planet. We should live an accountable life, holy life in the fear of the Lord. But at the same time, we should be ready to go yesterday. Now, we should be ready to go. And believe me, Christians are not. The church is backsliding like never before. But not me, not my house. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm not talking about your flesh. I live in the flesh too. But those in the flesh cannot please God, Romans 8, 8. Let this expectation that the Lord is coming be so alive in us. But most importantly, don't just wait for the Lord to come. You be prepared for him to take you. Because the worst thing to happen to you or to me or to any unprepared person anyone who tampers with the word of god anyone who plays around with sin the worst thing will be to see me see your brother live and you stay behind so don't just wait for the lord be ready for the lord that's more important when he comes he decides when I'm prepared I decide and I decide to be prepared right now I hope you decide to be prepared and I hope you decide to be prepared are you? the will the, the yes is mine yes Lord I'm willing to be prepared but the power to be prepared is by your grace and the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us in Jesus name brothers and sisters yes expect I don't want you to be excited only about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ I want you to be excited for starting getting prepared and decorate yourself as the bride of Christ without any blemish without anything that will bring blemish to the Lord or to the ministry amen and this is to be said to me in a more serious way so let us all take it seriously the Lord is coming back and he's our hope I'm just looking for the time to be the Lord amen